Hey guys, Marshall from Going Gear, SHOT Show 2015 in Las Vegas. We're here with Jason from Benchmade. How's it going, man? Doing very well. It's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. He did a video for us probably, what, three years ago? It's been a while. I yeah. got so beat up that I had to take a little vacation from it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But he's really familiar with the products, so uh, we're going to go through all the new Benchmade products for uh, 2015. So let's get started. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Starting with the black class for Benchmade, we'll begin with the 808 which is actually a little bit different for Benchmade in the terms of kind of that canted handle that you kind of see in some other brands, but it's different for Benchmade with a little bit of an oval hole. But this is a full G10 handle, has some custom hardware around the pivot, and I'll spin this up here so you can see around the standoffs, a little bit of a flatter, less round standoffs, and has a S30V blade. Again, kind of um, a little bit different, as you can see from my hand, if I was on, it's a, it's a larger knife, so it uh, definitely fits into our black class from a more tactical. It also has a custom hardware that makes it kind of feel a little bit more of a, could be in the blue class as well. Typical axis lock, I have to do it this way. Typical axis lock, manual knife. Use the hole opener to open it. Again, you can kind of see the, the design of it a little bit. Has a reversible clip for left or right carry. Has also a lanyard hole if you choose to use a, use a lanyard with it. Second knife is, it, you guys may kind of see this, uh, looks very similar to the Infidel. However, this is the Pagan. It's a little bit different knife. However, the reliability is the same mechanism as the Infidel. But what you see is, we took less steps out, what we call the Presidio grip, but the steps that were in the aluminum handle before are gone. And it just has a couple ball end mill grooves, but it's still an aluminum handle and all blacked out. The other main difference is, it's still a spear point, but does not have the fuller through it, the blood groove down the center. Last thing, is that it's a chisel ground blade. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's not ground on both sides, it's a chisel ground. So what we've accomplished here, it's also a 154 blade steel versus the D2 that's in the Infidels. So this is actually a little bit lower price point due to some of the cost savings we have uh, been able to achieve through some of these points. The chisel ground is actually gonna make this probably a little bit more of a functional, easy to sharpen blade than the, the uh, dual sided Infidel. But it's uh, very similar, like I said, the reliability is a, as just as good as the Infidel, same exact mechanism, just made some minor cosmetic and material changes. You know, I was playing with one of these earlier and I really like the uh, ergonomics on this. Less sharp lines and sharp edges and stuff like that. It feels really good in the hand. Yes, much, much smoother and again, kind of gives it a different look, different feel, but um, I think people who can appreciate the Infidel but maybe don't want to pay as much, they can definitely have their first starting point, but the Infidel is definitely still the, the top dog. Going on to Something that's fairly new for Benchmade. Uh, seems pretty simple on paper, at least on camera. This is a G10 push button automatic. Benchmade hasn't had, I've been here for almost seven years and have not, we've never had a G10 uh, push button auto. But from a material standpoint, you got a 154 blade G10. You can see it's about a mid range. So we have our 2550, 3550 knives, and then our 9051s and 9101s. So smaller and larger. This fits directly in between them in sizes and the material wise. So it sits in there in price points. Very comfortable. If there's such thing as a gentleman's auto, this would be it. Um, it's got a couple standoffs through the back. And again, it's a double clip option or a clip option reversible and then push button with a safety. Let me show you. Has a lot of jump to it. Um, here's your safety app application. And I'm assuming any of these we see with uh, serrated, they're also going to be available in Plain Edge as well. Correct. Yes. So this one's going to, the next one I'm going to show you is actually very unique in a couple of ways. So this looks like a traditional push button automatic knife. I'll go through some of the features before I go into the mechanism. So we have a 154 CM blade, 154 CM blade, aluminum handle. You know, very common for, for Benchmade to have that. We do have a safety on top, as you can see through here. Um, with a metal backspacer and carbide tip for breaking glass. So from a traditional kind of that first responder product, this is kind of has a number of applications. Now, the difference here is the mechanism. If I flip this over, you're gonna see, you see the buttons on both sides of this knife. Before I actually fire it for you, I'll show, you can actually fire this knife one side button push second side or at the same time. So if you're left or right handed, depending on the hands that's available, this is a new mechanism for Benchmade. Some of the benefits of the Axis Auto was that you pull back the bar and it's ambidextrous and it fires this. This is a 
based on the same premise, except it's a push button. So from an anatomical standpoint, you only have to push a button. So to show you, I will push the backside button first. It works without having to push the other one. Front side or both at the same time. And it's, it's the same thing with the release of the blade. I just prefer to push both of them at the same time when I'm unlocking it. So it's a new mechanism, again, uh, pretty interesting. And I will get to an assist knife we are doing with this as well. So you'll get to see that in another product as well. And that's it for black class. Starting off with the blue class for Benchmade, start off with a couple of uh, variant options we have. So the 477 last year we offered in a black color. All we did is it's a new anodization. Blade steel is the same, handle material is the same, but we went with what we call an aqua color. Based on anodization, you're never going to get a fixed, consistent color. So this thing's going to range between a blue and a greenish color. So we call it aqua, so we manage people's expectations because it's probably going to um, range a little bit from the picture. So there's a variant here on the 477. Another variant here is the 162 variant. So everybody's familiar with the green handle with the green and red G10 and the leather sheath. This is actually going to be a full tan handle. There is not a colored, um, it's not a dual color G10 like the other. It stays with the SRDV and the tie tubing, but this one also comes with a Kydex sheath versus the leather. So you get the tan handle with the Kydex or the green handle with the leather. For the 484, last year we did the 940-1 upgrades with carbon fiber and S90V blade steel. So the 484 launched last year with G10. We did the exact same upgrades with carbon fiber and S90V. You can kind of see, see the color of the standoff or the pivot ring and the standoffs just to give it a little bit of a pop. Essentially, it's the same exact uh, fit and finish as the 940-1 in terms of the upgrades that we did. Please keep on doing these and do more of these. The blade steel or just the higher end stuff? The, the carbon fiber, man. Those are super popular and they look great. They're just awesome knives. Well, we'll definitely do it as long as people want them. So <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> so for the true everyday carry gent guy, you'll see our 485 here. This is basically that kind of everyday carry in the office, in your slacks. It's a small knife. Um, with an actually a smaller axis lock. This is not a big knife by any means. I, it's hard to tell via pictures, but when you hold this, this is actually smaller than if you're familiar with the 470 that we did in the assist last year with the aluminum handle, or actually two years ago. Um, it's actually a little bit smaller than that. So just to give you a reference point, but all attributes being aside, we've got a full gray G10 handle. So material wise, you get G10 axis lock and M390 blade. So it's still high end materials, but it's for that guy who wants to carry it, you know, with their slacks or church pants or maybe has a kind of a restriction in the office. They might be more comfortable just dropping this in their pocket. It does come with a clip. It's really lightweight. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's like I said, it's definitely for that everyday carry use. You shouldn't really know it's there. So this one, most people are probably familiar with it. It launched about a month and a half ago. But real quickly, let's talk about the 761. Um, the nice thing about this is we've had some time on locks, frame locks, depending on what you want to call them, in our line. But we've struggled with some of the manufacturing, either of the blade of the 760 or the 790 handles. So we brought it together. We spent some time trying to figure out time manufacturing. I think we've done a much better job. So we've got an M390 blade, titanium handle. If you take a look at, at this with some kind of some custom standoffs, uh, the clips, the tie, tie machine clip as well. I know some people prefer you know, a tip up versus tip down, but we manufacture it. Since it doesn't have a ton of detent, it does have a, uh, it's kind of uses as our, um, keeps the, the lock bar face from over ramping. Um, secondly, it does have thrush bearings in it. So it's a bearing knife for us, which we don't do a ton of. So from a different standpoint, got this full tie. It's very thin, as you can see. Um, I'm not sure if you can capture that. It's going to carry very nice for such a large knife, but materials are high end, and I think we did a pretty good job. Obviously, there's always room for improvement, but I think people can appreciate kind of that more traditional look with some more modern machining that we've done on this thing. So it kind of for, it should appeal to a lot of people who like tie monologues. Can you tell us about the lock bar? There's a nice little feature on the lock bar. Just on the, uh, are you talking about the, yeah. the over ramp? Yeah. Oh, so. We, um, just as a kind of a approach, we've, we've played with lock bar faces, especially on ties. Q 
keeping it from galling and we, from the over ramp standpoint. So we actually produce this little teeny lip. I don't know if you can see that very well in the camera, but it essentially just keeps it from over ramping. Never had any problems with it, you know, breaking off or wearing out, but it's an option to keep us from getting a solid lock up without it over ramping and becoming too sticky for the end user. It works really well. We've already had these in stock for well, a month and a half, I guess, since you guys released them. And uh, great lockup on it. It's nice to see where it doesn't have the over travel, you don't have the extra movement or anything like that. It's still really solid lockup. Well, I'm glad you guys like it. And again, like you said, we're, we're working on being better at what we do. And, and Titanium was never our, a real big core competency of ours, and we're definitely making it higher priority for us. You know, you talked about the bearings. One of the first things that people notice when they open it up is uh, how super smooth it is. I mean, this has got to be the smoothest bench made that I've ever seen. It just opens up super easily, really easy to flick. Did a really good job on that one. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Here's a knife that may look familiar to some, but um, maybe not to others. However, last June in our last year's catalog, we had a knife from Shane Seibert Designs that had this handle. It's a stack G10 handle, so it's black with a green stack G10. Um, but it had a different blade, if you guys remember from the old picture. However, due to some uh, manufacturing concerns and issues with that blade style and just the sheer... Um, Thank you for getting rid of it. I'll say that. <laughs> That's, I hear that more consistently than not, so I'm glad, glad you also like it. But this is more a utility blade that we've gone to. It still gives you a large cutting edge, kind of gives you almost a tonto without the hard bevel lines throughout the blade. But um, it's really a nice knife. The other thing that we've changed since we actually launched it originally, so not only the blade, as you know, this has a full titanium liner. Um, we actually carbonized the face of this liner now. We used to never do that. You can't really see it in the camera, but it's a carbonized face because we, again, with titanium on the steel, we get kind of uh, galling up and produce a overly sticky lock bar um, and release. So we've since addressed that. And so everything going into the market this next month We'll have a carbonized face on the titanium um, and a new blade shape. Again, it's a liner lock, which is different for us than uh, Benchmade's typical axis lock. But it's a, it's a really beefy liner lock. It's got some good material in there. So, uh, you know, I, you occasionally hear concerns about the durability of liner locks. I don't think that's going to be an issue with this one at all, because, I mean, you can see the amount of material that it has in there. Yeah, I, I guess I should have mentioned that. Thanks for reminding me, is that this is actually, even for us, as liner locks go, this is probably the third thicker lock, uh, liner lock than what we do for a regular liner lock. So we've definitely addressed that. And it's a big knife and we want to make sure it's durable and safe and that's exactly why we did it. I know Shane's models are really well known for being probably some of the beefiest and most durable and just the hardest use knives that you guys make. So it makes sense that you put in that extra bit of material just to make sure that it, uh, it can handle all the stuff you throw at it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we, we, we try to take Shane's, any designer, we try to take their intent of their original uh, custom designs and make them manufacturable and affordable. So, you know, Shane agrees and we're, we're happy with the blade change and how this knife turned out. Here's, here's a couple knives. I'm going to show them together. Um, it's kind of part of like, you could, depends on what a person wants to use. Ex extremely long. We had our old CSK 158, CSK 2, very long fixed blade before, and then we kind of went, it went away a year ago. What we've done is, we've, if you can look at how big this is, We've got a clip point and a bolo blade shape. It has our old rant handle on it with some different changes. 1095 spring steel. This thing's meant to be beat up. It's got a powder coat, you know, and it, they both come in two different um, uh, sh leather sheaths. So made for speci specifically for the blade. But again, a bolo and a clip point, 1095 spring steel, so you can go out and just hack away. Something different for us. Yeah, I like it. I mean, choppers have always been a pretty good category for us, especially in like the bushcraft community and everything. So it's nice to see you guys doing more of that. Yeah, I, it was kind of a challenge, the length of it, and we're hoping to be able to start doing some longer stuff in the U.S. as well. So this is good. For those who uh, may have seen the black class product, um, part of the blue class is this G10 154 cm blade however you'll notice this button this is again part of the ambidextrous push button and this is an assist knife here so it actuates just like our axis assist with pushing the blade out okay but these buttons 
are much like, instead of using the axe lock to pull back, you can push a button or both buttons, and that's the release of the lock. There's a lot more that goes into this. There's, it does have a spine safety um, with some standoffs, so open back. Um, again, it's a assist knife, G10 handle with a new mechanism from Benchmade in our blue class. So the G10's in the, in the assist, and then the aluminum handles are auto. So for a few of the new HK products, you're going to notice over here a very large fixed blade. Again, we kind of kind of going with some larger fixed blade. If it, people are familiar with Benchmade, we had an old Delta Raider handle. That's exactly what's on this product here. We brought back the Delta Raider handle, the very large fixed blade. And the one next to it's a very small, thin fixed blade with a rubber handle. So we are actually kind of giving a little bit of a low profile, close proximity to the body fixed blade. This is just a color change up with Karambit. Uh, we had a black version this last year, just doing a color change. If you look at the two out the fronts, we're very familiar, we've had these before, but now we have a new um, hard anodized tan color in what we've already had the black before. Moving down the line, last year we launched an Axis um, G10 drop point. Now we're going to add a Tonto and tan handles to it. So we have drop points, Tontos, and tan handle. Uh, next to it, we with the success we've seen of the Axis with the black, hand, black handle last year again, we've decided to take them down into a smaller version, so we have mini um, HK Axis locks. And then, of course, people may be familiar with the 14440 that we've had in our line. We've, we've brought in a couple different color variations for them. So just a few variants and a few brand new products on the HK side. All right, Jason, some really good-looking stuff this year. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to show us everything. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.